In theory, an NFT can really refer to anything, both physical or digital. A quick disclaimer before we go further. NFTs, and more generally, all cryptocurrencies, are a very complex issue, both from a technical and also a social standpoint. This video isn't an endorsement for or against NFTs, and unfortunately, a 10 minute video is not nearly long enough time to get into all of the intricacies and complexities of them. This video is really just my attempt to demystify some of the arcana of NFTs as I understand them so that you can hopefully have a more informed opinion about these issues for yourself. All right. With that out of the way, let's dive in. Now to understand the first assumption, the artwork itself is non-fungible, it will be helpful to understand what fungibility and non-fungibility actually mean and where these terms come from. And before looking into NFTs, I actually had never heard the term before and had no idea what it meant. But for anyone coming from economics or finance, is most likely very familiar with the term. In the simplest sense, fungibility or two things are fungible if they're capable of mutual substitution or if you can exchange them. So fungible goods Goods, we're all familiar with. This is something like cash or dollars. If I give you five one dollar bills and you give me one five dollar bill back, that exchange is equal for both of us. Now if two goods that are fungible can be exchanged, what does it mean for a good to be non-fungible? Well, the most basic level, it means that goods can't be exchanged. A common example of a non-fungible good is often a collectible. Let's say I have a first edition foil Charizard Pokemon trading card. Now since this Charizard Pokemon card is non-fungible, I can't just walk into a coffee shop and give them a Charizard in exchange for something like a coffee or a bagel. If I did want it to purchase something with the value of the Charizard, I would have to first go through a market or a network or something like eBay, convert or sell the Charizard into dollars, and then use those dollars to buy the coffee or whatever else I want. So now that we hopefully have an idea of the difference between a fungible and a non-fungible good, what does it mean for a token to be fungible? Now for NFTs, people often assume that the art itself is also non-fungible. Now with an NFT, the only thing that is non-fungible or that's unique is the token. Now the artwork, if it's an image, you can make as many copies of it as you want. Anyone on the internet can view it and download it and it can be passed around and shared between friends. And the common retort is, sure, the digital file can be copied, but I'm the one who owns it. Just like as many people can take a picture of the Mona Lisa at the Louvre as they want, but the museum itself actually owns the artwork. But again, this is where the connection between between something like physical art and NFTs really starts to break down. And to understand why it breaks down, let's walk through a simplified process of how creating an NFT actually works. So let's say you're an artist and you have a really awesome digital painting. So you bring that digital painting to an NFT marketplace, something like Nifty Gateway in this example. You upload your image and the marketplace mints a token. The token itself is just a unique identifier. There's only one of them. It's a sequence of numbers and letters, but it doesn't actually contain the artwork. The artwork isn't somewhere hidden in these letters and numbers. All that the token really is, is essentially a locator or an address. It points to wherever the actual image or the file lives. In this case, in the NFT marketplace's servers. So let's say an art collector comes along and they really like your piece. They go to the NFT market and in exchange for some amount of payment, the collector gets this token or rather this sequence of numbers and letters. They don't actually get your image. That image still lives somewhere in the NFT marketplace's server. All that the NFT, or really all that the token really does, is it says this art collector bought this unique identifier that points to this digital image that lives somewhere in this marketplace's servers. Now just because an individual owns a token, in the process there's no transfer of copyright or trademark. You as the artist still officially have copyright. You still can determine when, where, and to whom that image is shown. For example, just because someone bought an NFT doesn't mean they bought the rights to use your image or your likeness in something like an advertisement. Second, there's actually no transfer of the asset itself. Again, that image or artwork still lives somewhere on the internet, whether that's in the NFT marketplace's servers or wherever else the token points to. The collector doesn't actually get something like a special file that's cryptographically signed. And the third kind of weird subtle thing is that to actually mint an NFT of some artwork, you don't have to be the original artist. Now, if someone makes an NFT of some other artist 
this artwork, chances are that if it becomes widely known, that token itself won't be worth much since it's not a token that the actual artist created. So while NFTs are supposed to limit things like forgeries for digital assets, there's still kind of this meta problem of how do you know and how do you verify the person who actually created the NFT in the first place was the original artist or had consent from the original artist. And with this third point, I imagine there's gonna be a lot of messiness, both legal messiness, but also messiness of provenance, or rather, what's the lineage of where this digital artwork came from? And while there are solutions to a lot of these things, I just wanna make it clear that NFTs themselves don't have any safeguards built into them. And now for our final misconception, that the art or the digital asset is what actually contains the value. Going back to our collector, let's say he pays $1 million for the NFT of some artwork, and again, the NFT itself actually just is something like a URL that points to the actual image or file or digital asset. In this case, let's say it's inside NFTs are us. So the value of this $1 million actually lives in the token or the NFT. And you might be saying, oh, that's pedantic, John. The NFT actually just represents or is a stand-in for the digital art itself. But let's say that, that artwork is actually a pretty common image that lives in thousands of places on the internet. The value actually lies in the collector's ability to say, with this NFT, I essentially have a certificate to this artwork. There might be thousands of these images out there, but only one of them has this NFT, this specific NFT. Just like if you have a Fender Stratocaster guitar that someone like Eric Clapton played and signed, there might be thousands of similar or identical Stratocasters out there, but since you have the one that has the signature of Eric Clapton, this is Eric Clapton's guitar, that's what contains all the value. And in this regard, an NFT can be almost thought of as a digital signature. And the last assumption, let's say 3B, is that NFTs are forever. So let's say that this collector has this NFT they bought for a million dollars. You would hope that sometime in the future, maybe 10, 50, 100, 150 years, that NFT will still hold the same value and still point to that same digital artwork. But if NFTs are us suddenly goes bust or some other NFT marketplace or startup that issued you your NFT goes bust, well, the actual artwork or image might still exist somewhere. The fact that an NFT points to a specific location now that NFT or that identifier that you bought for a million dollars points essentially to nothing. And again, this is wrapped up in the fact that an NFT is really just a location identifier or something like a glorified URL. And again, there are ways to get around this. Say if you store the actual digital asset on something like a peer-to-peer -peer network or content addressed storage like IPFS, your token in theory will point to something that is much more resilient to individual companies or servers going down but again this isn't actually encoded in the nft specification so hopefully this video cleared up at least some misconceptions about NFTs that you might have had. And again, this is a very kind of complex and nuanced topic, much more than I could cover in this short YouTube video. If you made it this far, thank you. Hopefully you had fun watching this video. <laughs>
since they need money ASAP if you haven't noticed. So basically this is technology that have the buyers be able to prove that they are the owner of a rare or limited in quantity digital asset. Okay, so I was skeptical of NFTs until this weekend. Since all of the most annoying people I know who lost their life savings on Bitcoin or GameStop stock were now talking about this which turned me off. But as someone who prides themselves on being the person who can find good sources and do a ton of research that helps me not do embarrassing takes, I figured it was time to hit the books and talk to some smart people, and now I have my take. And that take is, I regret to inform you that the most annoying person in your feed who talks about Ethereum all day is unfortunately correct. Remember, only you are in charge of your happiness.